when did you and Dimebag first meet? What was your first encounter with Dimebag? His mom worked with my wife and my mom at a factory in uh, Arlington, Texas. Yeah. And I came to pick my wife up from work one day. And, and Daryl's mom, Carolyn, you know, she goes, Joyce tells me you play guitar. And I go, a little bit. She goes, my son plays guitar. Uh, and it's like, you know, you hear that. Yeah. And you just kind of, you know? Yeah. And, and, and he's really good. He won the Arnold and Morgan guitar contest. And I'm like going, really? She goes, he's opening for Savvy next week in Fort Worth. You remember Savvy's? No, I don't remember. Oh, OK. Anyway, there was a band called Savvy. They had their own club called Savvy's. It was a great place to play. Yeah. And, and um, so she goes, you want to come out and see my boys play? And her boys are Pantera, right. you know? Of course, I, they, they were opening up. They were playing Loverboy and stuff like that back yeah. then. And then, um, so I'm like, going, he's really good. But it was a 20-minute set. Yeah. And they're playing pop music because they're opening up for Savvy, which is the big deal. Right. And then I get a call later, and, and, and they go, you know, we're doing three sets tonight at Aragon Dance Land. You got to come check it out. So I go check it out, and I'm like, by the second set, Daryl ripped into his guitar solo. He's 15. Wow. And I'm like, uh uh. <laughs> no, it's like, I mean, my, my tongue's down on the, on the floor. Wow. And it's just like, I had never seen a human do what he did at 15 years of age. It, I wasn't, it wasn't human. Wow. And, and, um, you know, I knew from that moment, it was many years after that, it was maybe eight years after that before they got the big record deal and he got huge. Yeah. But uh, I, I always knew, wow. I always knew because, I mean, he couldn't be denied. And, and, you know, Vince is one of the greatest drummers ever. Yeah. You know, I mean, that band was, they're the best. Yeah, they're incredible. Do you remember the, the basement in Dallas? Yes. Yeah, I was in Dallas. I remember this is when I first was old enough to get into clubs. And I'd seen Nine Inch Nails play, and they were doing, this is a long time ago. Three years with Nine Inch Nails. Did you really? Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a huge. One of my best friends. I've met him a couple of times, about three different times. He's always been so, so nice. He's a great guy, but I don't think he wants everybody to know that. I know, exactly, right? <laughs> He's like, shh, don't tell everybody that I'm actually nice. Well, I actually, I went and saw Nine Inch Nails, and then they were having an after party at the basement. So I got wind of this, and I was like, oh my God, I gotta go. that was my first time I actually ever met Trent. He was so nice. And so we went to the basement. This is the first time I'd ever been there, hanging out backstage, or in the, like, the VIP area with Nine Inch Nails. And next thing you know, all the guys in Pantera walk in. I was just like, oh my, I mean, it just like, it just took the breath right out of me. And I, I was very, I was only 18 years old, so I was really, I was a little bit, overwhelmed and a little, a little bit intimidated, you know? But I remember, I think I got a couple of words with each of them, just like a quick hi, nice to meet you kind of thing. And I remember they were all like very approachable. They're, you know, they're, they're big, like tough, scary guys. But if you actually go up and talk to them, you know, it, it was just, I, that's gonna be a memory I will always carry with me. It's ironically, when you bring up Nine Inch Nails, the last time Daryl and I were together was um, at a Nine Inch Nails show. Really? And I actually, I met Vinny quite a few times too, and he's obviously being from Dallas, and he's a really awesome guy too. He's fun. Great drummer. What a yeah. great drummer. Incredible, incredible. But nah, Daryl, that night was crazy. Uh, Trent saw him in the audience, and he smashed this guitar to ribbons. The truss rod's going through the fretboard. I mean, it's uh -huh. bent over backwards. So, you know, I grabbed Daryl, you know, I saw him after the show, and that was, you know, the first time that we were together since his mom had passed. And uh, we're all very close friends. And, and um, so anyway, so, I, you know, we hung out a little bit. We had some limos. We had some black tooths, you know, drank a lot. And then I took him back to see Trent, you know. And Trent, I never told Trent how close Daryl and I were. You know, it's like, you know, I'm, I, I've got a gig. I'm not, I'm not there to tell him who all I know. But I knew Daryl was going to be there. I was so thrilled. And we had the time of our lives. And, and um, you know, the thing was... I went to Trent the next day and I said, you know that guitar with the truss rod busted? Yeah, I said, you did that when you saw Daryl, didn't you? And he goes, yep. And really? I said, "I said, let's send it to him. <laughs> so we, I got Trent to sign it all up. Yeah. We shipped it out to Daryl. It was like the next day my phone's ringing, dude, holy fuck, god damn, that's the baddest thing I ever saw in my life. You know, he's like, he's like, oh my god, it's, I gotta play some on my wall. 
He just flipped out. He oh, just that's awesome. Out. Yeah, but that was actually the last time I was with Daryl. Wow, wow. It's like, it just brings back so many memories. Oh, I'm sure, absolutely. Well, you know, I've been talking to Rita quite a bit. I actually met Rita a year ago um, on the second floor of the Key Club, and she is cool as shit. I love that. Great gal. She's incredible. Yeah. I love Rita, and, and it's really good because, you know, Rita and I had a good talk that night, and, and uh, I was in, in Nice, France with Nine Inch Nails when Trent's mom passed, and Rita was with, you know, I mean, not Trent, Daryl's mom Darryl. passed, and, and, and uh, Rita and I talked about it, you know, and, and it's just like, it was, she's so healing, and at the funeral, you know, she was overwhelmed with everything, and, and I gave up, came up and gave her a hug, and she'd hugged 100 people that day, and she, I don't think at first she realized it was me, and then later at the memorial she saw me, and, and, and she goes, she comes apologizing to me, and I go, what are you apologizing for? My God, what, you know, how did- She's been did, through. Yeah, and then, you know, guys like Mike Inez and Jerry Cantrell showing their love, and. I mean, there's, the thing that Daryl had, Charlie Benante, they, they just had the best friends. And those people were there, you know, and, and, and Rita's just fantastic, you know, and it's just, you know, I got nothing but love for Vince and Rita. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, Dimebag's passing affected so, 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 so many people. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. I mean, of course, he's got so many fans, but he had so many friends, too. Was, everybody loved him. Everybody. He did every fan like a friend. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I never saw him be the rock star, never, you know. I mean, he was the character, the, the performer, but he was always giving love. He, it's like, he was a light. Just totally down to earth, just wanted to be one with everyone. He, he was real, yeah. he was real. Yeah. But he, he really, except for how he looked, really never changed. Yeah. Not from when I first knew him. He was wild and crazy like that when he was 15, 16 years old. Wow. You know. well, I love hearing these stories. I love hear I love hearing people talk about him and tell stories about their encounters with him and their you know friendship with him. And it just it really just it keeps him here. You know. Well, the thing is, th this is how I feel about it. And I, I said this before, and I say it. You know, as long as we live, Daryl lives. Absolutely. And it's like you know we have to share these memories. Daryl's important, and he needs to be remembered. And he, uh, he's the greatest metal guitar player who ever lived. Bar none. And such an influence on so many other musicians. He was, you know, the thing is, is he was an influence on me before anybody knew who he was. I, I really feel privileged. I, you know, three million or so of us knew who he was in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yeah. But the, the but it was kind of like our little secret, yeah. you know. And I was so glad when he blew up, you know. Yeah. It was just, yeah. you know, yeah. he deserved it. Absolutely. It, and it's yeah. and and come on, the greatest greatest band yeah. ever. Yeah. I'm gonna cry over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to. <laughs> well, you know what? It's been such a pleasure talking to you, and thank you so much for telling all of these amazing stories. I mean, I, it really touches me. I know it, re it really helps people to hear these stories. You know what I mean? And you know, there's one thing, and one really good thing happened about this because Daryl and I tour all the time, so our paths, our ships were always going in different directions. So it was rare that we ever really got to hang out as our careers took off, and and. The thing is, you know, at Daryl's funeral, I saw Dean over there, and I knew Dean. I played Dean, yeah. and and um, I saw Dean and Elliot at the funeral, and and I the first thing I said to Dean was, you know, I you know one thing I'm really happy about is this is where Daryl wanted to be. Yeah. Dean was where Daryl was at. That's where he wanted to be, and I was so glad that that connection happened. Absolutely. It's unfortunate that it was such a short relationship. Yeah. You know, but that was a short relationship that was over 20 years in the making. Yeah. And and I, he came home. He came home. And all I can say is I'm sure he's up there with Carolyn having the time oh, of their lives. Absolutely. Well, you know, I was talking to Dean yesterday. I saw an interview with Dimebag way back when, and he was talking about how much he loved how much he loved Dean guitars as a kid. And he would go into the guitar shops. He'd pick up a Dean off the wall and like play. And be like, man, I wish I could have this guitar. And not only did he get to not only own the guitar, but he became part of the company and got to have his own line. So his dreams really were fulfilled. You want to hear Dean's story? Yes. This is one I haven't told many people, but it's true. Okay. Dean made a custom Dean ML for me. Uh -huh. He put my name on it, put a BB001 on it, all yeah. that, back in the 80s. And I waited nine months for that guitar. Wow. And I get the phone call from the store that it had arrived. So. I, you know, I'm working, so when I get off work, I get in my car, I race out to Dallas to pick up my guitar. 
Daryl's over there, wheelie, 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 on my guitar. Oh, my brand did. new guitar wow. that I waited nine months for. I'm ready to kill him. But I wasn't mad at him. I was really mad at the store. It was like, you know, and I said, this is the deal, because Daryl had one on order. And I said, I want to know before Daryl knows when his shows up, because I want to be sitting there wailing on his when it shows up. But no, that's how that's how it was. And I, I love that kid so much. I wasn't mad at him. But you man, I waited nine months for that guitar. You know, but it's the truth. You know? Yeah. Well, buddy, you are awesome. I feel like I have to give you a hug. Thank you so you. much for sharing these stories. This is just like really amazing to get to talk to you about this. It's my pleasure, and, and it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have known him. Absolutely, yeah. Well, good luck with everything. I wish you all the best. Are you going to be sticking around here at the Dean booth for the rest well, of the day? Little, not the rest of the day, but a little bit. Okay, well, good. Well, definitely come say bye to me before you leave. It was a pleasure meeting you. Me too. Thank Thanks. you.